1971, the year in which the Kamen Rider TV series sparked the beginnings of the Henshin Hero media boom, a period that saw the production of several television programs centered on transforming heroes who fought for justice against a wide range of adversaries and evil organizations. The first wave of programs inspired by Kamen Rider's success started to appear in the spring of 1972. The first of these, P Productions Kaiketsu Ayomaru, premiered on April 1st. Set in Japan's Sengoku period, the series centers on Shishimaru, a swordman with the ability to transform into Lion Maru, a heroic form that grants him enhanced skills and powers. On April 2nd, one day after the premiere of Kaiketsu Lion Maru, Baron One began its broadcast on Nippon TV. Produced by Toei, this program was a live-action reinterpretation of a manga by Takao Saito. It features best friends Takeshi Kido and Gentaro Shiratori, who have gained the ability to transform into the powerful hero Baron One in order to fend off Doruge and his followers, the agents of evil. Next up was Toei's Henshin Ninja Arashi which was based on a manga by Shotaro Ishinomori and premiered on April 7th of 1972, just five days after Baron One's inaugural broadcast. Taking place in the Edo period, the show features Hayate, a young man who has the ability to transform into Ninja Arashi, which grants him special abilities and power that aid his battle against the Blood Wheel clan and their leader, Majin Sai. On July 3rd of 1972, Suburaya Productions would enter the transforming hero boom with its take on the concept, Triple Fighter. This series focused on three siblings with the ability to combine into the powerful Triple Fighter in order to combat the Devil Phantoms and their leader, Demon. To learn about this series, watch episode 71 of our YouTube series. Then, on July 8th, just a few days after Triple Fighter's debut, Toei's next transforming hero would appear on the airwaves, Android Kikaider. This character, which was created in partnership with Shotaro Ishinomori, would take cues from Kamen Rider's framework, but set itself apart with its concept and visual design. While Kikaider was produced to take advantage of the popularity of the transforming hero genre that Kamen Rider's success popularized, the character's origins precede Kamen Rider and go back to the 1969 period drama Jojutsu Bugeisho. Broadcast on TVS for 13 episodes, this series presented the story of swordman Kido Makoto no Suke and monk Kaku Sen as they fight sorcerer Visho Jojin's plans to take over Japan. During this program's broadcast, planning started for a TV series that would inherit its time slot. The working name for it was Fugitive from Hell. During this draft stage, the working concept for this new program centered on Android K a fugitive who had escaped from the evil organization Dark, and as a result, must fend off the assassins they sent after him. Ultimately, the project was scrapped, with some elements of its concept being inherited by Kamen Rider. But thanks to Kamen Rider's success, Toei's production team revisited the concept after NetTV reached out to the company to produce a transforming hero program for a new broadcast block they were planning, called Henshin Tournament. Toei invited Shotaro Ishinomori, Toru Hirayama, and Susumu Yoshikawa to help them iterate on the original concept for Fugitive from Hell. In the initial revision, the working title was changed to Android Angel Satan, with the main character, Kei, now having a conscious circuit. 
after the completion of the new program's outline, the title went through additional revisions, including Android Red Blue and Android Zero Diver. This later title was originally used to start promoting the program, but the TV station objected to it, which led to Ishinomori proposing an alternate name, Android Kikaider. Whereas Kamen Rider featured a cyborg who could transform into a grasshopper form, Kikaider centered on an android who transforms from his human disguise to a form that was inspired by the human body model. His design was characterized by an asymmetrical look with its right side dominated by a blue color that represented the character's intelligence and righteousness. In contrast, its left side was red, which stood for Kikaider's passion and potential for evil. The character's left side also featured exposed mechanical and computer components, which visually conveyed the characterization of Kikaider as an imperfect, incomplete android. This would be further bolstered in story by the character's incomplete conscious circuit, which would become a key component of the series' narrative and the character's evolution. With its character design and storyline fleshed out, Kikaider started its broadcast on Saturday, July 8th of 1972. The show would be supported with a manga counterpart authored by Ishinomori that was serialized in various children's publications of the time. While this arrangement was typical of the period, the manga played an unusually strong role in influencing the direction of the TV series. Ikaider's story revolves around Jiro, an android developed by Dr. Komioji to counter Professor Gill's dark organization and its evil plans to take over the world with its destructoid robots. Built in secrecy, Jiro's design incorporates a special conscious circuit that allows him to resist Dark's influence, distinguish good from evil, and adapt to any situation he finds himself in. While Jiro is incredibly strong in his human form, his true powers and abilities are unlocked when he transforms into his android form. These include attacks like Double Chop, Giant Swing Throw, and his signature finisher attack, Denji N, which is used to destroy most of Dark's androids. Thanks to the advanced technology that Dr. Komioji built into Kikaider, the android is able to learn and adapt after each battle against Dark. This allows him to develop new techniques like Ginga Hurricane and Kikaider Spark, which helps Kikaider overcome the increasingly powerful adversaries he confronts as the series progresses. Throughout his journey, Jiro would be accompanied by Dr. Komioji's children, Mitsuko and Masaru. They would also be supported by private detective Hanpei Hattori, a self-professed 16th generation descendant of master ninja Hattori Hanzo. Together, they would travel across Japan in search of an amnesiac Dr. Komioji, uncovering and defeating the villainous plots of the Dark Organization. The stories in the first half of the series generally followed the same format and were for the most part self-contained. A Dark Destroy toy appears early in the episode and ushers in the organization's latest plot. Kikaider, alongside Mitsuko, Masaru, and Hanpei, would have a run-in with Dark's agents, which led to a battle between the Destructoid and Kikaider. But to help expand the broader storyline of Jiro's journey, three subplots were weaved into these early self-contained stories. The first is introduced in episode 3 and centers on Jiro's self-perception of being a man, conflicting with the reality of being an android. This is further complicated by Mitsuko and Masaru, who also view Jiro as a human rather than a machine. This theme is explored to various moments in these early episodes of the story. For example, 
In episode 3, Masaru offers Jiro a fish to eat, which forces the android to explain that his energy consumption is different from humans. Later, in the same episode, Jiro is injured while fighting Orange Ant. This leads to a scene where Mitsuko is repairing Jiro, and Masaru refuses to watch because he doesn't see him as a machine. This comes to a head when Jiro tells the two siblings that he has always thought of himself as a man, a human being, but recognizes that inside his body, he has a motor for a heart and a computer for a brain. He knows what he is, but he doesn't want Mitsuko or anyone else to see his mechanical self. The second subplot centers on Jiro's incomplete conscious circuit. This idea is introduced in the first episode, where following Jiro's win against Grey Rhino King, Dr. Komioji explains to Jiro that he needs to complete the circuit to reach a perfect state and operate to his fullest potential. While initially Jiro agrees to this, he changes his mind after defeating Grey Rhino King and Green Mantis. He realizes that he's happy as he is, and the final circuit is unnecessary. He wants to compensate for the incomplete circuit with his will. However, this makes Jiro susceptible to the influence of Professor Gill's flute when in human form. The flute is a tool that Professor Gill uses to control Dark's androids, and throughout the series, it's a way for him to order Jiro to operate against his will which results in Jiro attacking his allies and eventually becoming a fugitive from the law. The third subplot in the first half of the series is focused on Dr. Komioji, who having survived an attempt on his life in the first episode, has lost his memories. He resurfaces in episode 5 where it's mentioned that he was spotted working near the Project Green Grounds. In episode 6, he comes back for the first of many appearances where he is lost and being pursued by dark forces. Each time, he would just barely miss our protagonist or would be quickly separated from them. This storyline would go on throughout the series and evolve from Dr. Komioji randomly wandering around Japan to him taking on odd jobs in the different towns he found himself in. These included construction jobs, bartending, driving, bank security, crap fisherman, and a hot dog vendor. He would eventually recover his memories in episode 36. The second half of the series would continue to touch on these storylines and themes, but some changes were introduced when main series writer Masaru Inoue, whose tokusatsu TV credits include Kamen no Ninja Akakage, Giant Robo, and the first Kamen Rider show, left the series after episode 25 to help Toei prepare their next big transforming hero series, Kamen Rider V3. His role would be filled by series subwriter Hideka Nagasaka, who would refine the series by tying in more elements and influence from Ishinomori's Hikaider manga. This led to changes in how Jiro was portrayed, becoming a more trouble, suffering protagonist who had to contend with increasingly stronger dark androids and the tragic outcomes of his ongoing battles, which are more multi-layer than the ones he took on in the first 26 episodes of the series. Dark's Deathstroke toys are no longer simple, one-dimensional characters with straightforward plans to defeat Kikaider. They have been leveled up and can now have more complex interactions with our hero. This change becomes visible in episode 27, which in many ways serves as a pivot point for the series. In it, Dark Destructoy Violet Turban is first presented in a human appearance similar to Jiro's, and instead of a head-on attack, to recover the conscious circuit's schematics, she appeals to Jiro's sensibility as a fellow android to win his trust and make him believe that she is looking to escape Dark. 
She is so successful in playing this role that two of Dark's androids, Green Sponge and Red Devil Stinger, start to think she might have betrayed them. While initially it looks like she is just playing a part, she acknowledges to Kikaider that she really meant what she said and that she regrets not being able to die like a woman before exploding. Episode 27 also brings Mitsuko's feelings for Jiro to the forefront by showing her anger and jealousy towards Violet Turban as a result of Jiro's caring for her and making this a relevant element of the story that will run through the last episode where it is dramatically highlighted as part of the series ending scenes. The series would enter its final story arc with episode 35, which pits Geekider against Black Crow, Dark's most powerful android yet, easily overwhelming her hero and forcing him to make a life-risking move to increase his power. The episode concludes with Professor Gill threatening that Dr. Komioji will complete Dark's new secret weapon, an evil warrior more powerful than Kikaider. This sets in motion the introduction to one of the most influential characters in the tokusatsu hero genre, Akaider. Built with the antithesis to the conscious circuit, the demon circuit, Akaider is a cyborg built with one singular mission, to destroy Kikaider once and for all. Formally introduced in episode 38, when he first appears in front of Jiro, he quickly stuns our hero with an aggressive series of attacks, only to abandon their duel when he reaches his power limit, due to needing another blood infusion from Dr. Komioji's body. He is then reintroduced to the audience in his human form, Saburo. He uses this appearance to win over Mitsuko, Masaru, and Hanpei. He uses this newfound trust to leverage them as a means to get to Kikaider. Meanwhile, our hero discovers that Hakaider's head is holding Dr. Komioji's brain and if he damages the cyborg in any way, it could kill the doctor, which results in Kikaider taking a cautious approach to this new nemesis. They will continue to battle through the end of the series, at which point Professor Gill decides that he wants to destroy Hakaider alongside Kikaider. This results in the two adversaries briefly fighting side by side until Hakaider succumbs to a sneak attack by Dark's final android, Skeleton Flying Squirrel. But this gave our heroes the opportunity they needed to return Dr. Komioji's brain back to his human body, allowing him to escape the evil organization's laboratory. Now the stage is set for Kikaider's final confrontation against Professor Gill and Dark's forces in episode 43 of the series, which serves as the explosive and emotional conclusion to Kikaider's journey. On May 5th of 1973, Andre Kikaider wrapped up its broadcast on Japanese television. Due to the rating success of NetTV's new Henshin Tournament Hour, the show would be followed by a direct sequel series, Hikaider Zero One. While this program would focus on a new hero, Jiro would make multiple appearances, including its final story arc. But he would not have a prominent role due to actor Daisuke Ban's schedule. The actor, whose major debut role was Andre Kikaider's Jiro, proved to be a talented performer in the role, which led to another opportunity as the protagonist in Toei and Shotaro Ishinomori's next transforming hero series, Inasuman, which aired between 1973 and 1974. He would also play the leading role in another Toei transforming hero series between 1976 and 1977, Ninja Captor, this would be followed by a feature role in the 1980-81 Super Sentai series Battle Fever J as the second Battle Cossack. 
the actor would go on to make many appearances across various tokutatsu and action-oriented TV productions from multiple studios, including Toei and Tsuburaya. Jun Misunoe, who played the role of Mitsuko, would appear in a few more works after Kikaider, eventually retiring from the entertainment industry. Masahiro Kamiya, who played Masaru, would continue to appear in several tokutatsu works, including the lead role in the 1977 live-action robot series Daitetsujin 1-7, which you can learn more about through episode 79 of our YouTube series. Actor Hajime Isu, who played Dr. Kumiyoji, would appear in other tokutatsu hero series like Iron King, Condorman, and mobile detective Jiban, where he takes on the role of Dr. Kensu Igarashi, creator of another android who fights for justice. Mitsuo Ando played Professor Gill, and by the time of this role was already recognized for his excellent portrayal of villains and evil executives, which prior to Gikaider included Cobra Mask in Seven Color Mask and Dr. Uber in Giant Robo. He would play another antagonist role against Daisuke Ban in Inasuman Flash as Fuhrer Geisel, resident of the Desperate Army. He is also well known for his roles as the Black Cross Fuhrer in the first 55 episodes of Go Ranger and Professor Monster in the 1978 Spider-Man TV series. Lastly, there is Shun Ueda, who played Hanpei Hattori. He will go on to appear in other tokutatsu works like Robot 110, Toei's Fushigi comedy series, The Space Sheriff programs, Kamen Rider, and Ultraman, often playing light-hearted or comedic roles. During its broadcast run, the TV series was supplemented by a theatrical production that presented a scaled-up version of Kikaider's battle against Dark. Released on March 17, 1973, as part of Toei's Spring Manga Festival, it featured a 3D presentation and pit Kikaider against every Destructoid he had fought up until that point in the TV series. For more info on this work, check out episode 60 of our YouTube series. In addition to the TV series, an alternate version of Kikaider's story exists through its manga. Untether from the limitations of a TV production, the manga was more ambitious with its portrayal of Jiro's journey and often featured more elaborate enemies and backdrops for its battles. And while not directly connected to the TV series, the manga supplements the show by filling in gaps that the series glosses over, such as Dr. Komiyoji's backstory and the development and pre-planning of Kikaider. During its original broadcast, Kikaider was discovered by the general manager of Hawaiian TV station, Kiku TV, who believed the program would be a great addition to the station's lineup. And in February of 1974, the show would begin its broadcast in Hawaii, immediately becoming a local pop culture phenomenon. From merchandise sales to stage shows, Kikaider was now entrenched in Hawaii's public consciousness, a phenomenon that continues to the present day thanks to Generation Kikaida, a local organization that continues to promote the series through merchandise, media, and local events. Over the years, the series and its characters would re-enter the media landscape through multiple related works and spin-offs. The first of these was in the 1977 movie Jack Cobb vs. Go Ranger, where Kikaider is mentioned as one of many allies around the world fighting the crime organization. One of the best known spin offs is the 1995 movie Mechanical Violator Hakaider, which centers on a darker reinterpretation of the cyborg anti hero. Between 1999 and 2002, a diorama story entitled Kikaider Double Zero was also serialized in Monthly Hobby Japan and served as a sequel to Kikaider and Kikaider Zero One, taking cues from Shotaro Ishinomori's manga. In 2000, the Kikaider Zero Two manga 
reimagined the original Android story, making use of darker elements and narrated from Mitsuko's point of view, it followed the ideas of the original story but with some new twists. The same year saw the release of Kikaider the Animation, which was based directly on the original manga by Shotaro Ishinomori. This is followed by Kikaider Zero One, a direct sequel which concludes the story of Kikaider. A Kikaider themed pachinko machine was also produced in 2006, featuring animated scenes that recreated or reimagined various battles between the series' most popular characters. Five years later, Kikaider, alongside Kikaider Seer 1, Inasuman, and Zubat, would make a short appearance in the 2011 movie Oz, then O. All Riders, Let's Go Kamen Riders. In 2013, Android Kikaider, the novel, was published. Written by Keisuke Matsuoka with art by Kenichi Muraeda, who previously worked on the Kamen Rider Spirits manga, it's another reimagining of Kikaider's story and intended as a promotional vehicle to create awareness of the new theatrical work that was being produced at the time. The film, Kikaida Reboot, was released in 2014 and was a darker retelling of Kikaida's story and was supported by a large marketing campaign that included an appearance by Kikaida in episode 30 of Kamen Rider Gaim. In addition to these spin-offs and reinterpretations, Kikaida and Hakaida also inspire other characters and references in the tokusatsu hero genre. For example, in the 1984 TV series Shotenshi Bioman, Biohunter Silba is a mechanical assassin based on Hakaider, according to character designer Yutaka Isubuchi. In 1987's Hikari Sentai Mask Man, Red Mask is shown as an 11-year-old performing Jiro's transformation sequence. Shojenki Metalder a Metal Hero series by Toei, featuring an android with an asymmetrical design and color scheme reminiscent of Kikaider, premiered in March of 1987. Its story, themes, and characters took inspiration from the Kikaider TV series while adding contemporary elements from the period in which it was produced. More recently, in 2018's Kamen Rider Z.O., Actor Jingi Irie, who played the title character in Kikaida Reboot, appeared as Rento Makina, a robot from the year 2121 who can transform into Kamen Rider Kikai. This character is an homage to Kikaida with both its visual design and special attacks. Kikaida has also appeared in multiple video games, including the PlayStation game Super Tokutatsu Tyson 2001 an RPG mashup that is similar in spirit to the Super Robot War series. In 2009, Kikaider and Hakaider also made an appearance in the arcade game Ranger's Strike. Kikaider also made a short appearance in a 2012 PlayStation and PlayStation Vita TV commercial. Today, Android Kikaider continues to be celebrated by fans from multiple generations around the world. In North America, the first two episodes of the show and the 3D movie have been made available through the Toei Tokutatsu World YouTube channel. Plus, Generation Kikaida continues to make the series available through officially licensed physical media in the form of DVDs. Whether you are new to the transforming hero Tokutatsu genre or a seasoned fan, Kikaida is a legendary series that should be part of your collection. If you haven't watched it yet, make this your next series. And if you've already seen it, go and rewatch the Hakkaider story arc.